you, <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You feeling social? Yeah. You feeling just this morning? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you are the vanguard we're supposed to get behind? <laughs> Hold up. It's not an accident, I'm sure that I come to you this morning after having spent a week in New Orleans. For weeks before, I was gathering thoughts and feelings and asking my friends and people around me questions on what they thought social change, social justice meant. Here are a few of the responses that I got. Social justice is struggle. Well, that sounds exhausting. Who wants to wake up to struggle? To know that if I'm committed to social justice, I'm going to struggle for the rest of my life. That that is where I find my hope. Well, it makes me question, of course, then what struggle means for each of us in here. Um, someone else said, social justice makes me think of you, each other. My parents, my siblings, the kids in our lives especially. I see the faces of people I love when I say social justice. I wish them well fed and healthy. And somehow, when I see their faces, this is where justice starts. But it's an interesting idea to say that justice starts. Because anything that has a beginning has an end. So again, Another response was, I think of grassroots, union -y things. Are you asking if these words are cliched? Some more words, patchouli, <laughs> police brutality, hunger, anger, need, free mumia, and vegan bacon. <laughs> things that people thought of when they thought of social justice. I think I was asking if the thought itself is cliché, not just the word, because the words are the thoughts. We communicate with the people around us with this one thick, unyielding tool called language. Even when we're silent, we're in meaning. So what are we talking about then when we say another world is possible? Can we talk this world into existence the way we do language itself? I know it is not an accident that I'm here today after having been in New Orleans. But before then, I was collecting these thoughts. So I'd like, to ask, I'd like to ask you, what words come to your mind when you hear social justice? I was asking you. Y'all can feel aspiration as, a, as an ideal. What about you in the glasses? Both of y'all got glasses on. <laughs> a sense of equality, trying to reach. So there's, a, okay, so reaching, a reaching, that's like a movement, a sense of equality. Okay, what else, y'all? Yeah, it's in the red. Fighting for what you believe in. Yes. Peace and freedom. So within, as a poet, what I then think of, within all of these words, within equality and the word peace and the word freedom, what is my particular engagement with those words? What have those words meant to me in my life? And when I ask a group gathered together in the name of social justice to talk to me, an ally, and a peer in social justice, and I can't get a definition back, I wonder how it is we speak to those people who are not here today. Those are our parents, and our cousins, and the people who sit next to us in class. We're at a place where we have to create new language around what we believe in. This exercise it says so. Some more word associations from a friend of mine. On social justice, the words bridge, apocalypse, 
lifetime, generational, malignant tumor, force field against it, library, overdue, music, launch pad, social chemotherapy. My friend Darren is in his early 30s and battling cancer for the second time. Faced with daily questions of mortality, definitions change. Faced with years of displacement, identities come to mean as much about what is missing as it does what is visible. The first poem I wrote in and about New Orleans is called Crawfish Soldiers and Grace. A year before the hurricanes Katrina and FEMA hit NOLA, I was there with a touring company from Broadway. I got to meet the city on her own terms, on her own ground in the Treme area, away from Bourbon Street and the New Orleans that sold wholesale as a place to go get lit and laid. I say, I can't understand what the immediate connection I felt to that city and her people. I think about New Orleans. Last weekend, Eve Ensler called New Orleans at the Superdome Super Love event, the vagina of America. And I say, if you have a problem with that, you may have a problem with that word or the world, because I can't imagine a truer thing said about a place in this country. When I hear the word social justice, I think of New Orleans, always. I'm gonna read you this poem, Crawfish Soldier's Grace. At Lenny's in New Orleans, belly full of crawfish and a beta from Dookie Chase, enchanted with the Crescent City, I sit with my squad, the spots not popping, but a Guinness and a load off, always good for you. His falling down is drunk, loud and larger than his physical, intent, though unsteady, to make conversation. I listen. He Navy SEAL rolls a short sleeve rough, reveals a tattoo I do not register, aggression in his movement. His eyes turn accusatory before my own. You have to excuse him, he insists just back from Dubai hours ago. The practice of this poet's life is to accept grace, even braided with fear. When I am electric alive, I am aware of my circumference, my periphery. I venture the path ahead of me. How is Dubai? Through fire, water, fog, he drops dead Iraqis, Cheyennes and weapons, Beirut. The stories are slurred, his eyes unsteady, his gaze aflame, focused to singe. Still, I keep it. One does not look away from the sick. I feel my features morph into faces burned into his memory. His eyes on me have weight. My breath labors under this density, this ready-made history. He is fumbling, a backpack, something to show me. Many minutes and no matter. Heart in hand, don't take nothing scary out. You will recognize me, I will defend myself. He is, he is machine trained, calm, becomes a weapon in his hands. It is a binder he hauls out. Paper, military work, certification, his inked flesh, not as lawful as inked paper. He leaves and returns and leaves, and yes, he just killed some Iraqis. Yes, he goes back east in 45 days. Twice he says it, 45 days. I feel island. I feel sand. I stay smiling. Glad you are home safe. When he lurches, I do not waver. Compassion, compassion. Compassion. He insists on touching my bracelets. No storms off a thundercloud. In my heart, there is a room of tenderness for drunks, a corridor of love affairs with soldiers, a maze. Because I know ideals worth dying for, but none to kill for. As his girl scaffolds his feet, props his jacket on, he reaches for my hand. What kind of poetry do you write? He asks. This kind. Those were the kinds of poems I wrote once. Like most of you here, I watched the unfolding of the humanitarian crisis in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina on the television. I'd not yet been to the Superdome, so I couldn't really imagine the people there, hungry, in the dark, no running water.